Hey everyone, it's Elena here. Welcome to my talk about the reasons for moving from JavaScript to TypeScript. Just a bit of about me, I'm a software engineer at Deconium, where we work on such product which allows variety of users to user interfaces to have one universal backend. All the common features for those React applications that are mainly interacting to our universal backend are exposed through GraphQL API. So since the GraphQL is a strongly typed query language for APIs, guess what? In our API, all the types that we have, queries, mutations, inputs, they are also all strongly typed. So from this point of view, in our team, we started thinking of that we need to be more confident about the requests, for instance, that we are receiving from the front ends and also about the responses that we are producing and serving for the front ends. So that uh, we, on that point also, we felt that we need to have more control over it. So on that point, uh, we started thinking for moving from JavaScript to TypeScript. And definitely type safety was the first reason why we moved from TypeScript. Here I have some examples of types uh, in uh, GraphQL, how they are represented. So we have two types, we have got one input types. So inputs are mainly used for the mutations in GraphQL. Here we have two of examples for the query and for the mutation. And uh, we needed to think about how we should make resolvers for this kind of queries and mutations. And when we were doing our research, uh, we found uh, the tool from the Prisma team called GraphQL Code Gen, which allowed us automatically from the GraphQL type generate TypeScript types. And that was perfect for us because by doing so, we were able to have automatically the types for our resolvers and define the arguments for our resolvers and the return values. And it was just a matter of simple configuration and just running and executing one simple command. Here I have some samples of generated TypeScript types with GraphQL code gen. And as we can see, it generated types for the arguments uh, for the mutations and it generated types for the query, uh, mutation, uh, query arguments as well. So basically, it prepares everything for you to uh, use TypeScript. So by doing so, in our code base, we brought more organization and it became cleaner and easy understandable. It also was a short time investment for the newcomers in order to adapt to our project. But at the same time, for some people who did not come from object-oriented programming experience, it was a long time investment. But in the end, we all agreed that all the rewards that TypeScript gave to us, all those investments, we are totally worth it for it. So here ha I have some, um, to uh, some points about uh, uh, making our code base easier and structured. And uh, as much as we were defining these types for our project, we were having such feeling that we are uh, avoiding ourselves and our project to have lots of bugs. Um, so for instance, if you try to change some type in GraphQL type and you did not generate corresponding uh, TypeScript type for it. And if you try to use such type inside the resolver, it would give you a notice that this is not a compatible type and that what was made our uh, project less bug prone. We might also think that we don't want to use any type definitions <laughs> and we don't want to refer any types because we want to be free, do whatever we want. But at the same time, this freedom brings a lot of bugs which might be hardly debuggable uh, when we have them. So uh, when we also looked at our uh, GraphQL API, uh, we saw that we have a lot of queries and mutations that we were exposing and serving for our uh, front ends. 
So then we started thinking that we might need to uh, start creating of some reusable components, some reusable uh, bit of codes, which would help us for these different types of queries and mutations uh, to be reusable. And that was the point when we started of thinking to bring in our project TypeScript generics. And that was the relevant way when we defined the resolver, uh, the uh, generic resolver um, contract uh, for our uh, uh, resolvers. Uh, and mainly uh, this allowed our code uh, to be uh, more cleaner again, more structured, um, and also it made our code base more um, maintainable in the long-term perspective. And here uh, we have some small uh, snippets for implementing this uh, general generic contract of the uh, resolver definition, where we can see that we are using it for different types of resolvers. So first the example of the query resolver, and another is uh, example of the mutation resolvers. So. Uh, I just want to mention that all these reasons that I talked about right now, it's just in the scope of the one specific project is experience. It's the personal experience that we got as a team at Ticonium. And um, uh, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Thanks a lot. <laughs>